hampered. We've talked about this topic a bit, but there's a few teams and I've got three teams total that I think are going to have Aaron Rodgers. First one is going to be obviously the Packers because the Packers currently have all the rights to him. Exactly. But my, <laughs> and- I think there's two other teams and I can talk, let's talk about your team first. And by your team, I mean, literally your team, yeah, the exactly. Indianapolis Colts, yeah. who the Indianapolis Colts, according to spotrack.com, they are second, I think, in the league when it comes to cap space. Yes, sir. Yep. I think they're, they're second right with they're $68 million. So th- if they wanted to trade for Aaron Rodgers, they could. And they clearly it's don't have Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Phillip Rivers retired. We talked about that last week. And now they have sort of a Kobe Brissett hit for agency. Yep. Yep. They have an opening in the in the quarterback room. And I mean, you can talk about this this Colts team and their strengths, their weaknesses, and why you think they're a perfect fit because you are the Colts expert. <laughs> yeah. So there's obviously two quarterbacks that come into mind when it comes to the Colts uh, this off season in terms of the trading options. I think first is obvious. I mean, actually, there's three. There's a bunch, but I mean, realistically, I mean, you have to rule out Deshaun Watson if the Texans trade uh, with Deshaun Wash or uh, trade us to trade Deshaun Watson to us I mean that's like uh, that's like a match made in heaven but I think they'd be stupid it's like the Rodgers trade getting traded the Bears that's a perfect fit or the Lions Robinson Allen Robinson would stay there in a heartbeat but come on now if 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 you if you are you really expecting that all right so you can rule out the Bears for the Rodgers and you can rule out the the Watson thing for them Matt Stafford and Aaron Rodgers are the two ideal fits for the Colts right now and I'm going to talk about why Rodgers especially is the perfect fit. I think Rodgers, he'll have the best offensive line he's, he's ever had, obviously. And you can see Philip Rivers' numbers, who's playing on his last year. He had the best quarterback. He had one of the best years out of any quarterback right before they retire, man. And uh, incredible stuff. He, he's, he looked great. And Rodgers is just honestly twice as good as him. So just imagine the output there. The defense, you have a top 10 defense. The Packers defense, they have good players, but they also have really, really bad players that for some reason they don't want to replace. So maybe if the Packers do listen to the uh, Aaron Rodgers this offseason, you should stay with the Packers. But you have Chris Ballard, who's probably, if not the best, one of the best general managers in all football and i'd he say he'd made, listen to aaron Rodgers, and he'd 100 percent listen to aaron Rodgers. he was listening to andrew luck man he would do anything right now just for him to come back but he's he respects him he, he respected the decision so he's still off and even for philip rivers got the weapons they needed and they were very competitive in the wild card round he he has young receivers. Michael Pittman Jr. I think is going to have a great season in his second year. T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton had a great second half of the season. I think that's he had a very slow start, but I think he had he he's going to come back and he'll he'll have a great second second uh a uh, great year with uh, Aaron Rodgers, of course. And I think just the, I think coaching Frank Reich will listen a hundred percent. He's the quarterback guy. Frank Reich's a he was a quarterback, right? He, he, out of all people, knows that he'll listen to the quarterback. He'll respect anything. And if there's a guy that will go for it on fourth down, Arib, I'm literally listening, talking to you here. If there's a, qu- a guy that'll ever go for fourth down, it's Frank Reich. And Frank Doug Reich Peterson learned Frank that. Reich. Doug Peterson and Frank Reich learned that from who? Andy Reid. Exactly. That's, that's, that's all I'm trying to say. I think in terms of just pure fit, I think – that that has to be that has to be it man and obviously i think the colts will probably go after another receiver just because i don't think zach pascal ty hilton michael pittman paris campbell those guys are all like tier three receivers i think respectfully they have to be they're not like stars yet they're not all stars they're not a pro bowl caliber although they have potential to be ty hilton was that and then he's he's now old now so obviously, I think they would go after like an Allen Robinson or a Kenny Galladay or a Juju Smith-Schuster or that type of receiver during the offseason. But that, like I'm saying, I think that would be the perfect move, I think, uh, in terms of uh, fit. And uh, I know the third team that you do have is uh, his home team. You can probably talk about that. Yeah. And similarly with what you said, where you think that Chris Ballard, the GM of the Indianapolis Colts, would listen to Aaron Rodgers – Compared to what Brian Gute, I think his name is Gutekunst, Gutekunst, uh, who is the 
GM currently for the Packers, who is obviously not listening to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, if you wanted to capitalize on the Super Bowl window, you would have drafted a player who wouldn't be sitting on the bench in Jordan Love. And I just think my dream team would be the uh, San Francisco 49ers. And they made it to the Super Bowl in 2019. And people might say currently, you know what? They have, they have a quarterback already. They have a guy in Jimmy Garoppolo. They're paying him a ton of money, right? And I was like, I thought this as well, but I did some research and they can actually cut Jimmy Garoppolo right now today. And they'd save $23 million in cap space. They could easily afford Aaron Rodgers if they needed to. And they'd only have, I think they'd have zero or they'd only have 2.8 million in dead cap. So There's nothing which is nothing compared to the $25 million contract that they're currently paying Jimmy Garoppolo. And if you were, if you t- asked me right now, if I would trade Jimmy Garoppolo for Aaron Rodgers, I would do it in a heartbeat without question. I get it, Aaron Rodgers is 37. He's going to be 38 when the next season starts. But when it comes down to it, he's just a far better player. He's a hall of fame player. And Jimmy Garoppolo can't get the best out of this San Francisco's 49ers offense. And also they have an elite and when I say elite, I mean an actual elite offensive mind in Kyle Shanahan, who has in, in the last five years, he's made two of the last five Super Bowls. One is an OC for one of the best offenses I've ever seen in the 2016 Atlanta Falcons. And then another one is a head coach as the 2019 San Francisco 49ers. And similar to Andy Reid, he knows how to get the best out of everything. He knows how to get the best out of literally every single running back who steps foot into that organization, whether it be Jarek McKinnon, whether it be Matt Breida, whether it be the the new guy, I'm forgetting his name. The guy Jeffrey was always, Wilson. Uh, yeah, Jeffrey Wilson. The guy who's always hurt now too. Um, who ran Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert. Yeah, like he knows how to get the best out of his running backs. And then he uses all of his wide receivers as not just wide receivers, but offensive weapons. And the lots of dump off paths, lots, lots of very much Kansas Chiefian sort of philosophies, if that's a word. He knows how to get the best out of this team. And thirdly, they have a great defense. They have Nick Bosa, who was hurt. They have Eric Armstead, D Ford, who was another star player who used to play for the Chiefs. They have, I mean, the, the offensive line is good there. Mike, uh, Mike McGinchy, George Kittle's there. Javon Kinlaw, Brandon Ayuk, Fred Warner, who is right up there with one of the best linebackers in the NFL. They're just stacked at every single position of them all. And honestly, this, if without the injuries, this Niners team probably would have made it to the Super Bowl this year. They um, were favorites to make it out of the one. When it came down to injuries at quarterback, at tight end, uh, pretty much injuries everywhere. But like they could easily do they have an offensive mind right they have an offensive mind they can protect Aaron Rodgers they have a great defense which is something Aaron Rodgers currently does not have in Green Bay and fourthly they have a guy in John Lynch who is actually eligible for the Hall of Fame this year as a safety so shout out to him who was a phenomenal player said that I never got to watch him because he's before my time but John Lynch I think he's another guy who would very much listen to Aaron Rodgers. He would take mine as a player, as sure. I'm sure he knows what a player wants as a former player. And I'm sure he would definitely listen to Aaron Rodgers, which is something that we've harped on multiple times that the Packers are not willing to do. And if I were betting money, I would say that Aaron Rodgers would stay in Green Bay this year. But look out, at least in 2022, where I think this Niners team would probably be equally as good, maybe slightly less good because, you know, contracts things go i think like things in the yeah, richard sherman i think is probably going to leave richard sherman might leave retire and another hall of famer right there but when it comes down to it if i had a dream situation i would choose the 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 49ers and the colts yeah. again are very much up there but those are my two favorite teams for aaron Rodgers. and i think when it comes down to it forget the roster talent forget offensive mind forget willing to go for on fourth down they're both teams that were willing to listen for to aaron Rodgers, and that's just not something that the Chiefs, uh, the Packers are willing to do. They're not willing to build around Aaron Rodgers and capitalize on a Super Bowl window. And I, I, it just asinine them all that, that that's happened. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this before. I obviously want him to be on the Colts, but uh, the Niners, not, the Niners, I think, may even be the more perfect, perfect fit. I think he's he was a born and raised San Francisco 49ers fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was, he, he, he was to get grown up there. He was grown up seeing 
lead saying seeing the Niner Stadium, seeing uh It'll going to the games. <laughs> yeah, seeing Joe Montana, Steve Young, those guys play. But I think just the fact that dude, they're a quarterback away. And I, I'm being I told the Reeb this before, before the podcast started. They're a quarterback away from actually I, I genuinely believe this. They would not lose a single game. I, I don't think they would have they would lose a single game. It, barring injuries, of course, but they would not lose a single game if Aaron Rodgers was quarterback of the San Francisco Niners. With the current lineup they have today, there's not a chance they lose <laughs> a single day. George Kittle, I'm as great as Devontae Adams is, um, and Robert Tunyon, I guess, but George Kittle and Aaron Rodgers is a nightmare made in heaven. And We're he's never had a star tight end either. Like, like, it's, it's insane. George Kittle and Aaron Rodgers would make – it would make diamonds, bro. It's it's insane. I think that that would be nuts. They have Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk on the other side too. I mean, and I wouldn't be surprised if they drafted another big body guy. And then if they and they draft another receiver, let's say if they draft, um, I don't know, Rondale Moore out of Purdue, or like a Rashad Bateman, or if they somehow maybe get like a Jalen Waddle. If they if Nico they get Collins or another. Yeah. Even third, I think what's his name? The the guy out of LSU, his, I think his name is Terrence Marshall, who's a very big body, six foot four wide receiver, which is something that the Niners currently don't have on the outside. If they could get something like that, and even forget about that, they have Kendrick Bourne, who is probably he's better. Well, than, yeah, I mean he's better than almost every single Colts wide receiver outside of Pittman and um, Ty. So, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, I agree. I, I agree with that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think there's a lots of good things that. I mean, there's just the 49ers as a whole. That being said, the story though, there, it would be there. I think, like you said, though, I think the difference is that that GM, Chris Ballard, would listen to whatever Aaron Rodgers said. So if Aaron Rodgers is saying, yo, get me this receiver, get me that receiver, obviously receiver is a need. We're going to get that damn receiver, and we're going to get that same job done. John Lynch, and I think that's the same that thing well. that's going to happen with John Lynch. Exa- John Lynch, exactly. So if and Kenny, can Gall- Kenny Galladay's hitting the market, <laughs> Kenny Galladay's hitting the market. If Kenny Galladay – The wide receiver for I mean, Lions. If, I mean, this is just insane. This would probably be the most stacked team of all time. If Kenny Galladay goes to the Niners and somehow they trade Aaron Rodgers too, I mean, like, I, that would, like – that would be Megatron Matt Stafford 2.0. Yeah. Like – yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's game over. I and that that team's not losing. I I exactly. I put I put all my money that they wouldn't lose. It, it, it just it, just in general, Kenny Galladay. Even on the Packers, I don't think they would lose a game either. If Kenny Galladay was put on the Packers with Devontae Adams, I I they're they're not losing a game either. But I think it just goes to the fact that Aaron Rodgers just needs he needs control. That's the bottom line baseline of all this conversation. Not even trading he needs to be listened to. He, he, and built that, but con- I think control is the main thing here because control. He needs to. Brady controlled the team. I mean, as 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 much as the GM does his job, Brady got the players that he wanted. That's why I'm saying control. Listen to is also true, but he's not even doing that. So I think that's a first step, maybe getting listened to. But he needs that. I mean, the dude is a superstar. He's probably the – he is the best quarterback I have ever seen. And, I mean, obviously, in, in the all-time picture, his, his, his legacy, I should say, definitely hurts that he's lost four straight <laughs> NFC Championship games. But, I mean, the dude is just – he's a remarkable quarterback. He's probably still going to be a remarkable quarterback for the next three, four years. So, if the Niners are – I'd trade anything – in this world just to win another Super Bowl. So I think the Niners or the Colts would definitely do that. So, I mean, I think those are the two fits. We talked about the Rams, obviously, too, but I don't think they'd give up Jared, they'd give up on Jared Goff that easily. Mm-hmm. But if the Rams, the Rams have Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, two elite receivers, two great receivers. I don't know about elite, but two great receivers. They have a, the best defense in football. That's another great fit. Obviously. So, I mean, it's just, there's, I think right now, if you're not Deshaun, I mean, Deshaun Watson's probably, he's on the trade block, obviously. So um, unless, unless you're the, I, I think the only teams that don't really need a quarterback are the Chargers. Um, the Chargers don't need one because of Herbert. I, I think the Bengals don't need one. 
I think the Jags are going to draft Trevor Lawrence, so you can rule that one out. The Jets are going to draft someone. The, ja- to stay with the, J- the Jets are probably going to draft either Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, or keep Sam Darnold. So it's going to definitely going to be one of those options. So the Jets are ruled out, or they trade for Deshaun Watson. So the Jets are ruled out. I think the Jets will have their quarterback situation figured out, and it won't be Aaron Rodgers. So you can rule out the Jets. Um, Bills, you can obviously rule out. The Chiefs, you can rule out. The Seahawks, you can rule out. And um, honestly speaking, I think outside the of those, are interesting, but and they, and they um, have money for it. And the Bucks are ruled out because they have Tom Brady. Outside of those eight teams, there's 30 teams, and then there's 32 teams, right? Out of those, outside of those eight teams, Reeve, just a lot, just genuinely speaking, the rest of the 24 should target uh, Aaron Rodgers. I think you have to because the dude is just too mm-hmm. too good. He's simply. On another level, man. I, I, I mean, best quarterback I've ever. He's watched. the best quarterback ever. I, I mean, if okay, Tannehill's playing great. If Tan, if Rodgers was on, is on the Titans. Just saying, like, even Tannehill's a good quarterback. But you have to double think. You have to rethink your quarterback situation when you're having the best quarterback in the football in football right now. On the, on the market. market, and he's exactly. not on the market currently. I'd bet money he doesn't. Yeah, I, I mean, if I, I think, but I think if I, I think were Rogers, he's not gonna say, I yeah. would internally. This is just something we both think that he would be feeling inside that he would want to be moved. Um, he's already said he wouldn't. He won't stay. He won't stay. I think after and his he contract, says he won't end his career with the Packers. Yeah, I, I, I think he, I think, uh, his contract expires in what four years, five years. I feel bad that guy got screwed of that contract, but uh. He, he's there for five years, right? Five more years, four more years? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, that's basically till he's like 42. But um, I doubt he'll stay the rest of that. But mm-hmm. if he does, if he's there for that long, he, he's going to have like the Brady, the last last two years like Brady on another team. Um, but yeah, I think that that's that's just the gist of that situation. Man. Yep. That's crazy. Um, There's a lot of things. There's a couple news items we can talk about. And also... 